go ahead and call the uh, meeting to order. Call roll, please. Dr. Ramona Becker. Here. Guy McDonald. Betty Martin. Here. Peggy O'Donnell. Here. Diane Wynn. Here. We've got a quorum there. Wonderful. Thank you. With all of our meetings, we'll begin with a moment of silent prayer. If you'll join me. Amen. Now, if you'll please rise and join me in the saying of the Pledge of Allegiance to our American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First thing before council this evening is the consent agenda, which consists uh, simply of our minutes from our last uh, city council meeting, which was held on August 1st. Mr. Mayor, yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as listed and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. First and second, questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Next is appropriations ordinance. 17-16 uh, uh, appropriations for this meeting total $665,486.84 uh, I do want to point out that 251,000 of that went for uh, various capital improvement projects uh, that was over there at the uh, courtyards at Elk Creek Rock Springs phase 5 and Rock Spring second uh, and just to let everybody know these are reimbursed by a special assessment uh, $53,000 was for 37th Street. That was for the rail crossing improvements. And a partial payment of $5,500 was made on our 2016 audit, uh, which is nearing completion. So, um, and then another big one was $51,300 was our annual payment on the big water tower repainting and maintenance. And then, of course, we have the $36,000, uh, $36,800 for the sewer main cleaning. Um, so if there's any questions or other comments about the appropriations ordinance. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve appropriations ordinance 1716. Second. First and second. Any more questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hi. And for city requested appearances, uh, this year we had two uh, resignations from our planning commission. I would like to recognize uh, Gordon Jones and Carla for their many years of dedication and service to the city uh, by being a planning commission member. So if the two of you would uh, uh, join me at the uh, podium up here. We're going to go down here. I'm sorry. I'm gotcha. You guys are too fast. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Well, I just want to uh, uh, thank you for all of your service on the Planning Commission from April 2006 to June 2017, 11 years. So uh, I hope you'll uh, yes. hang this plaque and think of us fondly as, as we do and as we thank you for all of your service. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Yes. All righty. And Mr. Gordon Jones, anybody not know Gordon, raise your hand. <laughs> Gordon, this guy knows more about planning. <laughs> Get all choked up there, buddy. But <laughs> knows a lot, and so we sure are going to miss you as well. We thank you for all of your uh, service over 10 years as well on the planning commission. Thank so you. We also have a plaque in appreciation for all of your service. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. And uh, I do want to point out that you know, received an email, and uh, right, it was not an oversight, but what absolutely get. Um, we did have uh, uh, another member of one of our volunteer committees who uh, uh, resigned fairly recently after a, a 
long length of service and we'll certainly get her recognized in the next couple of months so for that but thank you for all of your service you two thank you man. okay next uh, move into our public hearing uh, state statutes require that a public hearing be held before the issuance of any IRB uh, that stands for industrial revenue bond the city is considering issuing an IRB this is for the construction of epic sports in the sunflower commerce park over there in the second edition you guys might see all the uh, big stuff over there and a public hearing allows property owners and concerned citizens the ability to speak on the proposed IRB I see Kevin is here from Gilmore and Bell to uh, uh, answer any questions or anything any explanation we need I don't know that I need to add any explanation. I will point out that the resolution of intent on this project was adopted a year ago. Uh, and I think the reason for that was to move relatively quickly and allow the company to get their sales tax project exemption uh, application submitted. And so the next step really is just to have this hearing. And the hearing is necessary before you can issue the bonds and also uh, grant the incentives such as a property tax abatement so again just kind of the next step okay so I will hereby open the public meet the public hearing and ask if there's anyone in the audience in interested in speaking on the IRB to come to the podium at this time going once going twice there's Mr. No, Mayor, yes. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And at this point, we'll open it up to citizens concerned. If there's anyone wishing to uh, speak to council about anything on the agenda this evening, they can come forward at this time. Okay. With that, we will move to reports, and we'll start with. Dr. Ramona Becker. Uh, I don't have much to report tonight, uh, Mr. Mayor. All I can say is I'm very sorry I had to miss the hot dogs party uh, this week while I was out of town. That's always a lot of fun, and uh, so sorry I wasn't there. I wish I would have been. Um, and I'm also sorry I'm going to miss the league meeting. I have a cousin's reunion. That this is only the second one we've ever had and have a lot of cousins coming in from all over the country so I uh, won't be able to attend that meeting either which I really hate to miss especially when it's here in Wichita right. we should be there but uh, I unfortunately won't be able to so that's all I have to say tonight thank you thank you mayor I don't have a formal report, but I just want to remind the public that um, school starts this week and next. I know junior high tomorrow at sunrise, and then <coughs> Thursday the high school, and I believe uh, USD 259 starts next Wednesday. So I think all the traffic things. I'm not sure about resurrection. Is it Thursday? I think Thursday half day. I do too. So thank you, Mayor. That's very well. I have no oh. report. Uh -huh. This is Martine. Well, I guess uh, I attended the hot dog pool party. I never saw so many big dogs in all <laughs> my life, but they all did good, and uh, they had best dressed and bad breath, and <laughs> I don't know what else they had for <laughs> prizes, but uh, they did have one for bad breath. I'm surprised. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have wanted to wow. be the judge for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and he did have bad breath. Okay. But anyway, it was a lot of fun, and there were a lot of people there. And uh, two of the committee members, I saw two of the committee members, and Tristan and uh, the lady that helps her, Jean, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Jenny, they did a wonderful job. And the mayor and the chief were there. Mm -hmm. so. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Yeah, and I'll say at the uh, at the hot dogs pool party, it was neat. The weather, I don't think we've ever had better weather really? than we had yesterday evening. And 
uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Lasher was there oh, with his that. wife helping out. And uh, uh, as you mentioned, you had Jenny and Tristan uh, were there. And uh, uh, Brian from our rec department was also there for a while. So I certainly want to thank all of our staff. And uh, um, I know I, if I'm missing any, I'm, I apologize. I know that uh, there's at least four members that I uh, spoke to from the Community Development <coughs> Committee. Um, so uh, we'll thank. Uh, and that was uh, Joe and Danielle and Jeff and Jeff, at least. And so if there's anyone else, I apologize for missing. But do uh, thank all of our volunteers and all of our staff who were there. Um, Dr. Talk about Burrow. Yeah, and, and his staff. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Heartland, uh, who uh, sponsors and really helps out with that. Um, just, uh, just, it was just a fun event. And uh, I'm, just, uh, I'm, I'm glad that so many people were able to uh, be there. I noticed this year we actually had spectators sitting out on the lawn, really? like as if it were a show. On the berms. And that, yeah, on the berms. Yeah, thank you. It was, uh, it, it was, uh, uh, it was exciting just to, to see all that. I think they had popcorn, but they didn't offer it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice night out, and then of course a lot of people were using the uh, the playground and seeing the new surface afterwards. So it's also being copycatted by other cities mm -hmm. around. Too, yeah, which is neat to see. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure is. Yeah, I'm just. I can't believe we're closing the pool this early, but school is starting. Is it starting a lot earlier this year than? It's no. 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 I'm just it isn't, old. but it sure it does seem like it. It just the older we get, the faster it That's goes. That's what's happening. Then okay. That's what with, they say. <laughs> with that, we'll move down to city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't have a formal report. I've been working on uh, the bylaws, uh, specifically with the UAC. They didn't have anything so we kind of took the template from your feedback uh, during the workshop and started there met today and I think we're pretty close to being able to have something um, to present to council uh, when they come visit next month um, also have been tracking the Sedgwick County tax foreclosure sales um, there's one this month we don't have any properties on it I do anticipate that we will have some properties at the next sale, which will be sometime in the spring. So mm -hmm. I'll keep you posted on that. And of course, the state legislature is out of session, so nothing from them. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want, I misspoke at our last um, workshop. We were talking about uh, followers on social media. And so um, Tristan gave me some actual numbers. We have over a thousand followers on Twitter. We have over a thousand followers on Facebook. And we've got about 150 on Instagram, which is our newest uh, social media we're getting involved in. So, um, it, but what's amazing is, you know, all the tweets and stuff that were going out yesterday at the pool party and up to the pool party. When you do that, you get more and more people following. So it's kind of because um, it shows us, you know, who follows us. And um, sure enough, when those tweets and everybody starts retweeting them or, or, um, whatever on Facebook and such, then more people start following you. So we gain people every week. And um, so, but we've, we've, we've still got a ways to go, but um, I was nice to see we had that many. I was pretty happy about that. Do you want to talk about a certain selfie on Instagram that I saw earlier today? <laughs> Just to... Yes. It's... <laughs> And uh, yeah, and, and we're the uh, the Tristan told me the council's supposed to take a selfie tonight too. So I, oh, I took yes. one on the way back from LA okay. today, but there was no I didn't pay the eight dollars for oh, internet on the plane. Yep. So I'm going to send that in tonight. Yep. It's uh, it's it's like city hall selfie day, and so all cities people staff and stuff are are taking selfies, and so we'll see if we can get one a little bit later and, t and tweet it out. Um, and then the other thing is that council will recognize, because it's on the agenda, but maybe our staff doesn't know, or, I mean our citizens don't know, but um, the, uh, the latest census numbers that came out um, have Bel Air at a population of 7,661. And um, so you'll see on the agenda tonight that you now have three representatives on the league um, or the uh, the league voting delegates because uh, when you reach 7,500 or more, then you get three, and then of course I don't remember what the next um, change was that you got additional. But um, so that's why you now have three instead of two, like you've done in the past. And the other thing is, then it, that now makes us the fourth largest city in Sedgwick County. So we have obviously Wichita, 
Derby, Hayesville, and then Bel Air is number four. So uh, we surpassed Park City and Valley Center. So pretty uh, pretty exciting that obviously with a hundred new homes a year, there's families moving in there, and it's counting towards our population. So um, so that was all I had, Mayor. Right. <clears throat> Taking my selfie instead of the Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do that. All right. With that, we're going to move into ordinances, resolutions, and final actions. The um, and see, and the first one is a consideration of a uh, um, see a resolution determining the advisability of the making of certain internal improvements. So let me um, let's see here. And when uh, whenever the uh, this action is going to be A through C, but we'll need separate motions for each one for each resolution, but. I just let everybody know that whenever the city is uh, petitioned to install public infrastructure in a development, uh, such improvements are financed through a temp note, and ultimately then that goes to a GO bond. So the uh, financing process requires a resolution be approved authorizing these set improvements that I just mentioned. And since there were revised petitions for water, sanitary, sewer, and paving for the courtyards at Elk Creek, uh, council needs to approve the revised resolution. I know we did the original ones, but this is the revised ones, um, amending the original resolutions, like I just said. And uh, I see Mr. Callan is still here. So if you need to add anything or ask any questions, uh, I would certainly uh, send them your way <laughs> for this. I would add that what is being amended here are really just the parcels to be assessed. The projects haven't changed, uh, the paving, the sewer, the water, the estimated costs haven't changed. The original petitions and resolutions listed 43 lots or parcels to be assessed. And I think, uh, and city manager can add to this if I miss, misspeak, but uh, I think the developers and builders found that there were a handful of lots that they needed to enlarge a little bit to make them more attractive and more buildable. So they sort of did a lot line shift um, without a replat. And what you end up with are four lots that are slightly bigger parcels than they once were. And instead of having a fractional assessment of 143rd over 43 lots, you have 142nd uh, over 42 parcels. And that that's really all this does and and we amend and restate and reference back to the original resolutions but again uh, same estimated cost and same project description really just changing the method of assessment a little bit and the parcels to be assessed like i said we will need uh, individual um, motions for a through c here Mr. Mayor? Yes. So none of this has to go back through the Planning Commission? I don't believe Not so. Not if it's, no. Okay. Yeah, this is the financing of it, so. Well, I mean changing the lots. It's, the size of the lots. Right. The, the lots have not changed. Um, the parcels to be assessed have changed slightly. So if you owned lot 40, it now may be lot 40 plus 10 feet of the next lot. Oh, okay. And then the other lot may have, you know, the remainder of that lot plus 30 feet of the next lot. And so it, it, to simplify it a little bit, if there were five lots or five parcels that were going to be built on before, uh, as an example, there are now four. It, but not a replat. Uh, it's just simply you now have a lot plus a little sliver of another lot. And somebody has a lot and a sliver of another lot to expand. So there's no easements on. in between these four lots. Yeah, Andy, you want to come up and we're going to bring uh, Ann Stevens, our city engineer, who can uh, come up here. And Kevin can't get out of the fast enough, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this actually has gone before the Planning Commission. Um, what they did, there were some easements in, the, in these lots that they took a few feet off of one and added it to another lot. Jason Gish with MKEC was here probably two months ago. Um, presenting some easement some easement vacation and that's what this is about this is just the financing side 
of that easement vacation in the courtyards of the creek. So yes, it has gone through planning commission and it actually did come before the city council and they approved it. It was just, the timing is a little right. different. But we don't need to do an additional visit with that. Correct. Correct. Any other questions? Matt? Good question. Who wants to start this off? Okay, I'll, I'll take All a right. stab at it. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve a resolution determining the advisability of making of certain internal improvements in the city of Bel Air, making certain findings with respect thereto and authorize and providing for the making of the improvements in accordance with such finding. Is this the right one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Paving, yep. Imp paving improvements, courtyards at Elk Creek Addition phase three and amending restating and repealing resolution number r16-36 and authorize the mayor to sign second first and second any questions or comments on item a all in favor say aye aye, aye. Oh, same sign we'll move along with b and c here mr mayor yes I'd like to make a motion to approve a resolution determining the advisability of the making of certain internal improvements in the city of Bel Air, making certain findings with respect thereto, and authorizing and providing for the making of the improvements in accordance with such finding, sanitary sewer improvements, courtyards at Elk Creek Edition Phase 3, and amending, restating, and repealing resolution number R-16-35, and now authorize the mayor to sign. Second. First and second. Any other questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Councilman. I would like to make a motion to accept uh, a resolution determining the advisability of the making of certain internal improvements in the city of Bel Air making certain findings with respect thereto and authorizing and providing for the making of the improvements in accordance with such finding water distribution system improvements for the courtyards at Elk Creek Edition phase three and amending restating and repealing resolution R1634 and authorize the mayor to sign second First and second, any questions or comments on item C? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Next, we're going to take a little change of course here. We're going to uh, talk about the proposed budget, uh, item D here, the governing body. We spent the last four months working and discussing the uh, proposed 2018 budget, and we got started about a month earlier this year, and, and I just want to thank Ted and again for your staff for doing working on that reminding everybody that this budget includes four hundred thousand dollars for street improvements uh, capital equipment purchases and maintaining current services with no mill increase uh, once again we're able to maintain that uh, if you read the arc valley news you'll see we're not the you know that's not happening in a lot of cities right around us and uh, i'm very uh, proud that that we as a, uh, a group up here were able to uh, make that priority of no mill increase so we have heard the public hearings, uh, we've held the public hearings, excuse me, uh, with no comments made. So wanted to see if there were any additional questions before adoption. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I make a motion to adopt the City of Bel Air 2018 budget as published and authorize the mayor to sign, uh, the governing body to sign. Second. First and second, any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Take a couple months off before we start working on next year's. <laughs> Ted can breathe it. Sorry yeah. we leave. All right, let's move uh, on to uh, item E. Still, uh, we're going to go back to the courtyards at Elk Creek. Uh, when projects are under construction, things do come up that weren't planned for. Uh, I know we've talked about that a, a few times up here with different projects. In this case, fill dirt was placed over certain lots in phase three of the courtyards at Elk Creek. 
So uh, city code requires that requires that the ground be compacted to 95% density before house construction can begin. The developer is requesting that Kansas Paving complete the work at a cost of $11,931. The uh, extra cost is going to come out of the project balance and is spread as special assessment. So again, no cost here to the city. Um, and Ann is still here, Ann Stevens, our city engineer. Um, it's here to answer any additional questions if we have any on that. Okay. If not, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the change order with Kansas Paving in the amount of $11,931.01 and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. First and second questions or comments. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We have a change order in Rock Springs Phase 2. This is another instance where the project un under construction is requiring additional work. Uh, in this case, it's an outfall channel that's needed for the uh, detention pond, which has been agreed to by the engineer, developer, and the staff, all three. Uh, the developer is requesting the Kansas Paving complete <coughs> the work at a cost of $3,981.30. Uh, this extra cost, uh, like with the previous one, is going to come out of the project balance and spread as special assessments. questions on that mr. mayor yes I'd like to make a motion to approve the change order with Kansas paving in the amount of three thousand nine hundred and eighty one dollars and thirty cents and authorize the mayor to sign second first and second any questions or comments all in favor say aye aye, aye. oppose aye. item G uh, talking public works we uh, maintain we have a large tractor that is used for mowing ditches and open areas. The uh, tractor had a turbo failure, unfortunately, uh, causing the engine uh, to pretty much be just blown, right? Uh, staff feels that the tractor has another 10 years or more left, however, uh, in its useful life. So uh, the recommendation is that we repair this engine. Um, and two costs were received as options. Uh, one is to rebuild the engine, while the second is to do a complete engine replace. Um, Ann Stevens is here uh, with this one as well. Seems like every item we have is for you tonight. But uh, if you want to talk a little bit more about that, I know there's a little bit of information in our packet as well. So what we have before you tonight is, as the mayor explained, the turbocharger on the tractor went out as one of our staff was mowing. Immediately stopped the tractor. We got the repair shop called. They came in and looked at it. They said the turbocharger was blown. We replaced the turbocharger. It continued to leak oil. The um, they came out and looked at it again, and they said the turbocharger doesn't seem to be working. They replaced it at no cost to us. So we had two turbochargers replaced. When the second one went out, it dumped a bunch of oil into the engine and shot the engine. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, we have to replace the engine. There is an option to have the engine rebuilt. That gives us a six-month warranty on that engine. Um, it works, as we're getting to the end of the season, the majority of that time, the tractor would be sitting in the shop not being used because it's primarily used to mow. The other option is for the 15,000, which is a remanufactured engine. That remanufactured engine would come in a little bit quicker. It is more expensive, but it would give us a two year warranty on that new engine. So there is a significant cost difference. Um, staff really does not have a recommendation that we'd leave it up to council. You guys can decide the value of that two year warranty versus the six month warranty timeline you know there's we're not really going to get that remanufactured one back to give us too much benefit this year we may get it back for one mowing it's tough to say right now we do have a subcontractor that is working for us mowing the exterior ditches they charged us about thirteen hundred dollars to mow the exterior ditches 
that was about half of those ditches. So we used our two X marks mowing in um, tandem, kind of one right behind the other. And that works, but the X marks aren't built for that. It provides a lot more wear and tear on those. So we need to be going out for the subcontractor and we need to get a decision on the tractor so we can get replaced as or repaired as soon as possible. And, and which one will get it back in service quicker? The 15,000. The remanufactured. The, the remanufactured one, okay. Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Um, and so if we have to pay thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars, like I said here, a time, if we did that twice, we would almost pay for the other engine. So to me, it would make sense so we could get it and have the two year warranty where it wasn't sitting after that, then our guys could do that and okay. you'd have the two year warranty because you're gonna have to pay to get those ditches mm -hmm. mowed, she said. Mm -hmm. So it makes it up, about a $4, right? Difference right. Yeah. I think yeah. you're going to pay that and get in the ditches mode. Mm -hmm. Correct. Because we could get this pretty quick. You're saying because they could just pop it in like in a they week or so. They have to order it. Okay. But it would take two to three months instead of four to five months. So, it, I we may get it back if we go the remanufactured route. We may get it back for one mowing maybe two mowings that's kind of pushing it depending on how long the growing season goes but we're certainly not going to get it back next week um, okay so it, it's really a toss-up i mean we I may see. save we may get it back for one final mowing but maybe two if we push it but it's i can't guarantee remind me again where we're get. i have it here why it takes so long it's just something that they have to order and Ship okay and get back in it's, okay and then the rebuild is something that they it's my understanding that they would do at the shop okay Not same place shop, here but, yeah, in town the, though okay tractor. yeah yeah i'm liking the idea of the, the remanufactured even though it's a little bit more again if we yeah if we get one mowing season then we're down it's more like a two thousand dollar difference and just the idea of uh, with a two-year warranty versus a, a, a six month to me um, I think there's value in that. And just to let everybody know um, at home and in the audience here tonight, a new tractor that's similar to this is going to cost about $63,000. Uh, so these tractors generally have a service life. They usually last about, what, 30, about 30 years? years? Yeah. So uh, given the tractor, I mean, it's already 11 years old. Um, it has 1,600 hours where these normally have a $5,000 or 5,000, a 5,000 hour lifespan. So with this cost, I mean, we're looking at approximately 20 more years, almost, you know, 3,400 more hours. Um, and I thank you for that in the report here so that we have all that information because that, uh, uh, to me, absolutely cements the fact that we need to repair it as opposed to replacing it. So um, is there any way that we can get the remanufactured one quicker, do you think? Yeah. We will ask. Okay. But I, there's... We're kind of at their mercy. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, and also, uh, does this include the air conditioner repair draft, uh, shaft leaks, clutch, steering pressure switch, or are those separate items? Because um, the total on that one right. is 1,260. Those and were separate items. Those the, were separate? Right. The additional repairs to the air conditioner, et cetera, was 2,997.40. It was on the very last page, uh -huh. second to last page in that the report. That says steering pressure switch. What is it? Steering pressure switch is 2,997.40. No, no, they're that's, all together. That's for all together. Oh, that's all for all together? of those yeah, additional repairs. Down. And it's it's better to get them done while it's in the shop. Um, I'm hoping that that can be done while they're waiting for the engine. And so we don't have to have it out for longer. But okay, do we have that money? Yes. It's in, your, in their budget or? We're taking Ted, it Ted has confirmed that it's this would come out of the equipment reserve fund. Uh, we're projected to have around eighty thousand in that by the end of the year. And we have held off looking for a new dump truck that councils told us that we could pursue because of these repairs. That's.
pretty pricey. So mm -hmm. we will revisit that with Ted to see if there's still funds available for that new dump truck or we can wait until next year. Yeah, and the 80000 was including the dump truck, so uh, there's a lot more, obviously, if we don't pursue the dump truck in that fund. So the motion should read 15487.33 plus the, the 2997 Yes. 40. Yeah, I think it makes sense. You got to get it all done at once. Yeah. Well, Mr. Mayor, I would like to make a motion to approve um, a remanufactured engine at the cost of $15,487.33 and fixing the other items listed for $2,997.40 and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. Anybody got a coin? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. We have a uh, first and second. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Okay. Now, we need to talk about electing three voting delegates, delegate, delegates, and two alternates to represent uh, Bel Air at the League of Kansas Municipality meetings. That, that what, September 15th, 16th, is it? 16th through the 16th, 18th. 18th, I knew it was coming up. Um, and we've heard that uh, Dr. Becker is not able to attend. Um, I actually. When is when does the voting take place? Monday. Monday, okay. The 18th. Okay, I should be yeah, should be available for that. But but if, if we we just go to vote, would we have to pay the full registration fee? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So do we have? And this can include. It doesn't have to be elected officials up here. This can be our. Uh, who all is involved in that? That, that would include you? And yeah, anybody that, that attends. Can, can, yeah. Because I think Ty and Diane and I are going. Yeah. And Jackie, Mrs. And Jackie. Kelly's going. I'm going to try to go, but and I don't want to be in case. Because right. I'll know by the 25th. Mr. Today's Mayor. Only the 15th, right? Yeah. I have 10 days. I could be there on Monday, but that's the only day I be able to yeah. be there and yes. I hate to spend that much right. registration if I can't go to the rest of it. So what I would recommend is out of so we have Mr. Lasher, um, and yeah, and uh, council members Diane Wynn and Betty Martine and uh, uh, Jackie. So there's four who can be there. We need three and then I, I would ask that one of the four of you be the alternate and then you and me. And then yeah and then between the three of us we can Mr. Mayor, is any other staff? Our attorney? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I make a motion to elect Mr. Lasher, Diane Wynn, and myself as the uh, uh, voting delegates, and Mrs. Kelly and the mayor as alternates. Okay. I'll second. Oh, yeah. you second. Right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Our final item um, this evening is uh, we talked about this at a workshop a couple of months ago when we heard uh, uh, the uh, folks from Bannister Real Estate that came in and, and gave the presentation um, for, uh, to us. We uh, have utilized Crown 3 Realty. That, uh, to market the lots out there in Central Park. Uh, these are the lots that are owned by the city and the land bank. And uh, council uh, recently felt it would be best to move in a different direction. And uh, we let, uh, let that contract expire and uh, had decided that Bannister Real Estate, which uh, is run by a, a Bel Air resident who uh, has built, built a home right here in Bel Air in the landing um, and is excited and wants to see uh, Central Park especially do very well um, but uh, have decided that Bannister Real Estate would be the firm to move move us in the right direction in that so I want to see if there are any questions of staff with that before I ask for a vote okay. hearing none I would certainly entertain a, uh, a motion 
for Mr. Item motion, yes. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> motion. Yes. I make a motion to approve residential developer marketing agreement with Bannister Real Estate to become effective August 21st and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Wonderful. Okay, I'm excited to have them on board with that. Um, don't have any future issues before me this evening that need brought up. Anybody has any? Well, on the calendar, Mr. Mayor. Yes. On the calendar events, uh, uh, the CCD, CDC meeting is still listed as Tuesday instead of Thursday. We'll get that changed then, yeah. Okay. And yeah, are they meeting this Thursday? Or do you know when they... When, Whenever they, yeah, uh, I know they moved it to Thursdays. I can't remember which Thursday it was, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. Tonight, tonight. Right, they right. Said the third. third. They said the third. Was Thursday. it okay? So that so would we'll be get that change on the calendar. Thank you. Two days. And, yeah. uh, the 17th. I had something else, but I can't think of it now. Well, I would like uh, before we. Uh, get out of here I would like a 10-minute executive session for attorney client uh, privilege and invite in the city attorney and city manager 20 I'm being told we need 20 okay 20 minutes mm -hmm. we'll do that we'll get the motion here so there's a second second okay, wait, wait for wait. We got to see when we resume. Yeah, we're going to go in 20 minutes. I have 7:42. Yeah, I have 7:41 down there, so we'll be back at 8:01 according to the blue clock. All righty. We are in executive. Oh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed. We are in executive session. We we'll back out at 8:01. Yes, we do. I'm sorry.
piece of candy. I did not. <laughs> Okay. Uh, council just had an executive session. No binding action was taken. I'll go ahead and call the meeting back to order. Where are court bill? And is there any other business to come before city council this evening? Mr. Mayor. Yes. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Okay, I'm going to pass this.